I think the sailing is, is a bit of escapism, just getting out there sailing. But for me, the, the real intensity comes when we're racing, going out there and getting better at something. And there's always room for improvement. There's always room to get better at whatever you do. And when you're not out there getting better, it, it's uh, for me, it's very frustrating. Paul Goodison knows what it's like to have to fight back after a disappointment to achieve his goals. In 2004, he was one of the favorites in the laser class at the Olympic Games in Athens. But after a mistake in the last race, he finished a disappointing fourth, missing out on a bronze medal by just one point. However, that mistake made Paul Goodison go home and train harder to become even better. And four years later, he was back at the Olympics in Beijing to bring home gold for Great Britain. I think looking back at the, uh, at the Olympics in, in Beijing is, um, I guess it's just a, a bit of a proud moment, but it's more so of, um, of just a recognition that all the effort and all the things that we did in the campaign actually came together and it all worked. And I think it's, it's more of a bigger achievement than just, uh, and just a single achievement. For me, the, the laser sailing was never really about the speed and the adrenaline, it was, it was about the racing. There's uh, kind of no other fleet in the world where you, you get 140, 150 boats at the World Championships or at a very high level racing on a, on a short course, so you, you're never much further than maybe 10, 15 metres away from the nearest boat. So then moving over to the foiling stuff, it is, it is a lot more exhilarating through the the sheer speed you're achieving, but the racing, I guess, the fine art of the tactics is very different from, from laser sailing. So they, they're both quite exhilarating, but in, in, in different ways. The transition from sailing a one-person laser to the flying catamarans has been a big step. To continue developing and gaining a better understanding of the characteristics of these America's Cup boats, part of the training here in Bermuda includes sailing smaller foiling boats like the Moth and Nacra. The new generation of sailing is foiling, and to get out and do a lot of days in the turbos and in the 45F is, is kind of not very realistic because there's a lot of man hours involved in getting the boat ready, getting the, out on the water. But you can upskill so much faster in these little small boats. They're a lot more sensitive than the big boats and it is foiling. So it's all very relevant to, to sailing the bigger boat. It's, um, but they're, they're, they're kind of a lot more twitchy and all the fine movements make a much bigger difference than they do in the big boat. So it, uh, it translates quite well. He's um, a very smooth sailor on the water. One of the things I've been impressed with is his steering technique, particularly upwind. Very smooth, very able to feel the boats loading. Um, I think from years of small boat sailing, he's got the reaction skills. And so he's becoming very much a polished helmsman in the America's Cup. I think with time, he needs to learn the match racing side and the racing elements, which he will get the opportunity to here at Artemis. But as, at the moment, he's, a, I would say, an unpolished diamond. It is all very new to me being in, in such a big team with, with such a diverse amount of goals. It was back in my Olympic campaign very much all quite self-driven about how you achieve your goals and, and going forward to that. But this is a much bigger team. It's, uh, it's quite hard initially to get your head around uh, and it is sometimes quite tough to deal with. But at the end of the day, we, we are in this as a team and, and we all want to win the America's Cup. Mm -hmm.